Oh god, I'm gonna do another video, aren't I? Hello and welcome back. I've done a couple of videos on optimizing gravity turns. In the first one, I really brute forced it and had a constant turn rate. In the second one, I talked about how a real gravity turn is actually different than that. You initially turn, but then you kind of just follow your own path and you let gravity do the turning. Gravity turn. I'm still kind of annoyed with myself for not figuring that one out. But basically the more efficient way to get to space is to kind of initially start your turn and then just, you know, let it arc over and you just point your rocket in the direction you're going. And by using that method and improving my simulation, I was able to get close-ish to actually getting to orbit. I don't remember uh, what the exact number was, but I'm pretty sure even on the second time round, I wasn't able to get to orbit with the Saturn 1B, which is the rocket I was using. And somebody commented, I, I don't remember who, that I should try to optimize a reusable rocket. So I thought it was funny, said something like, oh, well, I would need to learn a faster programming language. I'm already only doing a couple of variables and it's taking way too much work. But then, you know, over the next month or two, I thought about it and, uh, I have to admit it, this commenter nerd sniped me. I had to do the simulation and find out how you optimize a landing rocket. So I took my second iteration of my code, which is much better, but still really not great, especially because I just hard coded a lot of how the rocket worked. And obviously the Saturn 1B was not reusable, so I had to update everything and generalize it so I can plug in a new rocket and then I also had to add new features that allowed me to track the first stage after it separated from the second stage so I could land the first stage. Now, right away, there's a lot of problems with my simulation. Like I mentioned in the last video, I did change it so it models supersonic drag somewhat more accurately, but it does not model heating. Aerothermodynamics, which is the study of you know, heating on re-entry, that was not really covered in my bachelor's degree for aerospace engineering. And no, you are not gonna be able to nerd snipe me into doing it this time. I am not going to do a bunch of research on a field of science I know nothing about, just so I can update this code I wrote over a year and a half ago to see if my rocket burns up. And the fact that I'm not calculating reentry heating means it's a lot easier to land this rocket than a real rocket because I don't have to slow down before entering the atmosphere. I can just slam into it and call it a day. I'm also not going to use the rocket as a lifting body. This is something that reusable rockets do where they will tilt the rocket and come down like this and that produces some lift in this direction so it can actually curve its path. This is a very important part of doing reusable rockets safely because you can miss your landing site and then at the last minute turn over and get above it. That way you know you're in control of the spacecraft and if you lose control it just crashes somewhere else where you don't have a bunch of expensive equipment. And it can make it more efficient if you're trying to fly all the way back to your launch site because you don't have to use as much fuel, you can just use the lift from the rocket. I am not doing that. I don't know how to calculate the lift from a rocket as a lifting body without basically just doing a bunch of trial and error in CFD, and I don't have access to the CFD I'm used to using anymore because I'm not in school. So I'm sticking with just drag and no lift, and I'm also not going to do a return to launch site. I am struggling with the number of variables I'm adjusting right now. I cannot add a bunch of other variables in how do I make an optimal path back to the launch site. I'm gonna land on a barge, I'm not gonna even aim for a spot, I'm just gonna say the barge is wherever the rocket lands. So that's enough about the details of the programming, I know that's not the most exciting thing. Let's look at what results I was able to find. All I have to do is find a rocket to plug into it. Shut up and sit down. Yes, obviously I am using SpaceX's Falcon 9, which a couple of days ago I actually got to watch 
doing a return to launch site landing. I was able to film that footage I just showed you right here at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Okay, well, not on base, but near base. <laughs> and that iconic sonic boom was a pretty cool experience in person. But anyway, my little 4 a.m. outing to watch a rocket launch aside, we're using the king of reusable rockets, the only real reusable orbital rocket right now, the Falcon 9. Basically every variable I needed came straight from this website, so thanks dude. I plugged all of that into my simulation, which was now generic and could accept any rocket, and then I kind of guessed. Yeah, I didn't want to optimize how much fuel I was saving and the gravity turn at the same time, so I found a gravity turn which was okay, and then I figured out how much fuel I needed to save for the landing. I did this in like seconds of fuel, so I would cut out so many seconds before the rocket actually ran out of fuel, and then I would see if that was enough to land. And I did run into one problem. Because I'm not doing an entry burn to slow down, I'm actually landing very quickly, so I had to use three engines for the landing, not just one like SpaceX, but because my code is now generic, I was able to just change one variable from a 1 to a 3, and that solved my problem. The way I'm landing is just burning retrograde and doing a suicide burn, which means you have too much thrust to hover, but you can slow yourself down, and you calculate your starting height using some basic kinematics, where you predict how far of a distance you would have to travel before you can bring your velocity to zero, and then you wait for that distance to be your height above the ground, and then you start your burn. And that actually worked pretty quickly. I was able to find that five seconds of fuel or so was enough to land my rocket on the barge. Now, because I'm landing with three engines instead of all nine engines, that actually turns into 15 seconds of burning for the landing burn, but that just means that I'm taking five seconds off of the stage one boosting stage two part of the mission. Anyway, now I had a rocket which I was pretty confident could land from any gravity turn, and I just ran it through the simulation again. I had to adjust some bounds because this is a different rocket than the Saturn 1B, and I waited and waited some more, and then with absolutely no work whatsoever, my MATLAB script delivered the perfect gravity turn. And that perfect, no caveats gravity turn has been right here the entire time. And to kick off this perfect gravity turn, you need to turn to an initial angle of 36.67 degrees at a height of 574 meters. You then hold 33 degrees for 78 seconds. Okay, so if you didn't catch that, the angle my rocket holds is less than the initial turn angle. What that actually means for the simulation is you do your initial turn and you just hold that angle you ended up at. So it's not holding 33 degrees, it's actually holding 36.67 degrees. But anyway, you start your turn at 574 meters, you turn to 36.67 degrees, you then hold that for an additional 78 seconds, and then from there, you will just follow your velocity vector into space, where you arrive with 154 seconds of fuel remaining. Yes! Finally, on my third video, I was able to get a rocket all the way to space without running out of fuel. Now, this is not major improvements to my simulation. It's actually pretty much the same as it was in the last video. It's just because the Falcon 9 is super overpowered. I didn't mention this at the beginning, but I'm launching a Crew Dragon, not like a giant payload, the heaviest thing Falcon 9's ever launched. And Crew Dragon is super light as far as payloads for the Falcon 9 go. The reason they do this is for safety. Instead of flying the best gravity turn, they'll actually do the safest gravity turn so they can guarantee the crew can abort at any time without re-entering and burning up or experiencing too many Gs. I'm doing this for fun in a MATLAB script so it doesn't have to be safe. And I'm also not doing my entry burn or anything else for the booster landings, so I need minimal fuel for that. So it just worked out that the rocket is so overpowered it has 154 seconds of fuel remaining when it gets to orbit. Actually, Unlike the real life Falcon 9, my second stage got to orbit before my booster landed, so I actually had to add extra code, which allows me to shut down the second stage engine instead of just continuing to burn, because I needed to keep the simulation running longer just for the first stage to get to the ground. And of course, the first stage landed, no problem, soft touchdown. That was one of the easier parts of the simulation to get right. <sighs> All right, let's get into the data. 
So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually watch a little animation I made of this launch. This is not a precise animation, and if you'll notice on the right, I have time. That is not consistent at all. Sometimes it speeds up, sometimes it slows down. It's all over the place, but it gives you a general idea of roughly what height and what we're doing at any given time. So we launch initially straight up, then around that 500 meter mark, we do this big power slide, which is actually, I'm gonna pause that for one second. This is one of the least efficient parts of the simulation, which I knew about, but didn't realize how bad it was until I made the animation. If you look at this rocket, it is turned way over, but we're still going straight up. That's a lot of drag. That is not efficient at all. It's not doing the gravity turn thing where you just let gravity do the turning. It's brute forcing it itself. This is something I could update. Oh God, I'm going to do another video, aren't I? So instead of doing this weird inertial angle where I lock myself in space, it might be better to do an angle of attack hold. The angle of attack is actually the angle between your velocity and your rocket. So you hold that angle as constant instead of holding your angle in space regardless of velocity constant. This would give us more precise control and it would be more efficient because we don't have to turn all the way to 36 degrees right away. We could do a few degrees of angle of attack and then you just carry that until you get to 36 and then you can decrease your angle of attack or slightly increase it later. Maybe we'd actually use that hold if it was angle of attack and not inertial angle. But as is, uh, we are just holding this angle constantly as the rocket ascends. So we do this power slide, and then uh, as you can see, the velocity actually goes a little past where the rocket is, so the rocket turns to follow it, and that is your standard gravity turn. We then have Miko launch the second stage, and we don't really care about what's happening there, so let's just focus on the first stage. It flips around and starts to re-enter. I have re-entry heating on the animation. There's no re-entry heating, like I mentioned, but we just fall, and eventually, once we determine we're ready for a suicide burn, we light the engine, extend the legs, and touch down softly on a barge. I almost killed my computer making this animation, but I'm very proud of it. So, uh, I'm gonna include it in the video no matter what. Now I'm gonna get more in depth on the actual data because I saved all of my telemetry and I think there's some interesting stuff in here. So let's start with our turn angle theta. You can see this initial jump where we move to our hold angle and then we hold that to about 100 seconds. But of course, while we are holding that angle, our velocity is turning. So once that hold time is up, we snap to about 60 degrees, which is where our velocity vector ended up. And from there, we just do a gravity turn the rest of the way to orbit. This is the X position, so that is downrange position of stage one. You can see this sort of has an exponential ramp. You start moving sideways because of the rotation of the Earth, but then as you do your gravity turn, that exponentially increases until we have our main engine cutoff. After the main engine cutoff, it continues pretty linearly because you're no longer accelerating until you actually re-enter the atmosphere and then you slow down and your X position sort of smoothly comes to a stop right when you hit the barge. If you compare this to stage two, you can see that the start is obviously the same because they're connected, but it continues to exponentially accelerate because it's continuing to orbit, unlike the first stage, which re-enters. Now let's look at the Y position of stage one, and you'll notice something weird. It actually ends below zero, and that's because of the curvature of the Earth. The Y position is relative to the launch site, so you take off, but then you're landing over here, below the horizon because the Earth is a circle, but otherwise it looks pretty much like you would expect. You start going up slowly, it speeds up, speeds up, you have Miko, and then you kind of arc over and fall back down. And then right at the end, because you're landing on the barge, you bring your Y velocity down and that position sort of smoothly approaches the location of the barge. 
If you compare that to the Y position of stage two, again, they look very similar, but if you look there right at the end, you can see it's just continuing smoothly. There's no little tail where it's entering the atmosphere or doing a landing burn to slow down. Now let's look at the X velocity of stage one. Again, this starts at about 500 meters per second because when you launch, you're moving with the earth. Don't rewatch my first video where I forgot that the earth rotated. And that velocity stays constant until you actually start turning. It exponentially increases until you have Miko where it just dead stops. And then because you're in orbit, there's not much drag on the rocket, it stays almost perfectly level until you re-enter the atmosphere. If we compare this to the X velocity of stage two, you can see that initially they're identical, again, because the stages are connected together. But after a brief pause for stage separation, you can see it continues to exponentially grow until it reaches orbital velocity. And you can actually see this weird tail at the end. That's because we are shutting off the second stage, and that is just the acceleration of gravity as we travel along our orbit. Now on to the Y velocity of stage one. Even though this is just our Y velocity, you can still see the gravity turn. Initially, we're accelerating upward constantly in a straight line, but as we turn, we're using some of our thrust to accelerate sideways instead of upwards. So there's actually a little dip in the graph, but the Y velocity does continue to increase because our rocket still pointed upwards a little bit. And then you can see where we have main engine cutoff, the velocity descends almost perfectly linearly, which looks weird, but that's actually exactly what we would expect. The acceleration of gravity is constant. It's 9.81 meters per second squared. And you know, it doesn't really change from the surface to orbital heights. So the slope of this line ends up being 9.81 meters per second squared. But of course that's with no air resistance. Once you hit the atmosphere, you see this starts to curve down and then we light the engines for the landing burn and it very rapidly goes to zero velocity. Now, just like the Y position of stage two, the Y velocity of stage two begins the same as stage one because they're connected. And then after main engine cutoff, it's actually falling and accelerating downwards because of the curvature of the earth. And once again, if you look closely at the end, you can see it stops being exponential and becomes linear. And that's right around where the second stage engine shuts down and it starts coasting. And that's it. There's the plot of the actual gravity turn, you know, plotted against the earth. And that's about it for this video. I hope you enjoyed learning about this as much as I enjoyed programming it. Maybe some of this might be the slightest bit useful to you. Probably not. But at least you know what it takes to land a reusable rocket. I'm Khan Happy. Happy holidays. And I'll see you next year. Shut up and sit down. Romantic.